Okay, I, I thought I would do this video. Um, I often talk about this subject. I know there are a lot of people out there that it's really not a big deal for, and I understand, and, you know, people who are a specialist, it is when anytime you have to use any kind of technology or you have to um, adopt something, um, it, 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 you run the risk of becoming uh, becoming involved with the technology and, and then you cease to be a specialist. Um, I know that concern, uh, such as a doctor, there, to have a doctor to have to learn about computers, um, it, the, the, the reason why it probably is not a good idea, but maybe better idea to have somebody the doctor consults with who is involved in using the computers is to keep the doctor being a doctor being involved in being a professional in that area and not to get caught up and confused and all the things that come with using a computer anytime we use that uh, I think it's great that cell phones exist and, uh, and and iPads and all that stuff exist because that it's the result of lots of research into making computers accessible to um, um, making computers accessible to everybody, um, because you know there's some people that just will never be able to learn or or come to understand how to use a computer. So, okay, I'm trying to improve my ability. I've actually got some headphones going to a Yeti mic right now that's sitting about two feet from me. The great thing about Yeti mics is they're actually stereo mics. So um, depending on kind of where you are to pro in proximity to them, they will. Um, you could. It sounds like they're you're in the room. However, this thing I think is just recording mono to me right now. Um, so the um, and yes, this is Linux, and uh, the the Yeti mic works instantly the minute you hook it up. Um, and I'll talk about that later, but that that just tends to be uh, Linux, and so we'll we'll cover all the topics. But uh, just keep in mind that if you're really intent on being to to having control over your money and being able to um, leverage um, your your money to the full extent that you're going to save money and still be secure it is in your best interest to learn and use Linux uh, if you're going to be using a PC if not use a cell phone because um, whether you know it or not um, below the, the veneer of all or most cell phones aside from the Windows cell phones um, you're using Unix you just probably don't know it and uh, the the iPhones and iPads use something called um, called Mac OS X, and fundamentally, Mac OS X is inspired by something called Mock and Unix, uh, a Unix environment. In fact, if you ever use or develop on a Macintosh, um, it's basically Unix. You're not doing anything different, and Linux is inspired by Unix, so um, it. If you want to develop iPad apps, you should probably learn something about Unix as well as how to program in a language. Um, uh, even if you can find programs that claim that you don't have to learn how to program to use them, it's in your best interest to do such because programming brings about um, a learning process that permits you to manage um, ideas and and to and to leverage ideas uh, to the point of architecting you know what architects do to make sure things can hold up because um, the difference between an architect and, and a basic artist is an artist doesn't usually have the capabilities to make their art um, withstand the test of time to hold up and to and to withstand the forces as well as being perceived um, um, from multiple points of view because when you design a, 
a piece of art, you usually design it from your own perspective and an architect can't do that nor can a programmer do that uh, unless they're designing for themselves. Um, in, the, in the open source world with Linux and all that, um, it, is, it is frowned upon um, to design a program then expect everybody to use that program uh, in the community without the community actually being able to contribute back and change and distribute the software freely. Um, if anybody tries to do anything commercial on Linux, um, people will, they'll probably resist buying the application or whatever it is unless it benefits them to, ha to have the application. And that's why people tend to, uh, program developers and, and commercial developers tend to um, go to the Windows platform is because um, the environment doesn't doesn't include consumers that are aware and and really driven to have good technology. They are dri driven by people who are Luddites that, uh, not to say that it's bad, it just I, as I said about doctors, you, you don't want people to, who are professionals who, who do something to have to learn how to use a computer. But when they do use a computer, they should learn uh, some of the complex areas of it so that they're, they, have, they have the guns with which to protect themselves, um, the, the skills to protect themselves from corrupt practices that are fraught throughout the entire commercial um, software industry and are there because people have to survive and survival means um, means trying to make things trying to sell things even when it doesn't make any sense to for people to buy the things you're you're it's a it's an act of trying to seduce people into doing things that they wouldn't do or shouldn't do okay and um, and by and by adopting uh, an open platform, which Linux is, um, you are giving yourself the capacity to be a good consumer, to be uh, and to create a community that is going to be is going to is going to have freedoms and freedoms that can exist for a long time um, and always be around. If this were not the case, Facebook wouldn't even be successful, Google wouldn't be successful. All that stuff came as a result of adopting open uh, technologies. Uh, Facebook was programmed on program on an open source technology called PHP. It's a scripting language I use when I develop websites. Drupal and Joomla are both PHP based. Um, they're open um, a lot of software now coming about is based on Python, especially the people who are working in artificial intelligence use Python and it's open. Um, there's almost nothing in our world yeah, it, that is strictly commercial anymore. I would say that um, uh, when people use a PC and, and, it's, and it's not in the environment of a company, um, they are using they are using it for they're using it to try to do things uh, that everybody they think is doing and they're buying software and they're having to train themselves on that software but usually a couple of years after that they're going to have to repurchase the software then have to retrain themselves and then they'll tend to wonder why things have changed and things that used to be there are no longer there and it's because that's what commercial software does to to deployments is they tend to change things for no reason at all and that's because it will drive you to buy the next version they will add features then they'll take features away um, anyhow so, myths and phobias about Linux and Unix that are a result of ignorance and shallow perception experience. 
this is uh, if this makes you feel bad if this offends you then um, just keep in mind that truth hurts um, the truth uh, if, if you're if you long to hear truth then um, then you love yourself if you don't if you if you're afraid to know um, the truth then you're going to be self delusional and um, you won't be able to ever learn I mean it's just as a child that is going to have to learn something and they resist it because they see it as hard and they don't see how it will benefit them but their parents know that they can't exist in that framework of what they think is that is essential um, because they know down the road those children are going to have to go out and get a job and and the things that they avoided are going to keep them um, are going to keep them are, are basically going to keep them a slave to their to their ignorance and so we can't have that and that's the reason why I educate people even to the point of pretty much offending them because one thing about offending people that is beneficial is that it causes them to it, it sticks in their mind um, the offense it helps them to remember the offense and then they will ponder it and maybe eventually see the 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 logic of it and and maybe the value in it um, of what it was that offended them and then they might come to see that it was just their lack of perception or their lack of their lack their shallow shallowness and their preference of the time that was keeping them from like actually accepting it um, and usually when people are offended it's because they've got a worldview that educates them and permits them to accept um, lies and and then they just they use it as a way to justify their stance and they are not willing to interact I've used Windows uh, for years I've I had Windows um, I this is the progression of my use of all computers as I know it when I was um, when I was a kid I had no access to computers. I started playing video games on an Atari 2600. And uh, when I hit about 12, I was going to go to summer school and learn. And one of the courses offered was to learn basic. And this is how stupid I was. I took the cartridges that I had for my Atari 2600 and they had these little co codes on them that looked like they were like something out of a computer. And I was going to take them and I was going to enter them into the computer to see if the computer could tell me what they were. And my brother looked at me and said, you don't realize it's just a serial code. It doesn't mean anything. And so things like that. Um, I was a Luddite. I was a computer Luddite and I just really didn't understand anything about computers. And and it took me years to come to where I am now and I'm 49 almost 50 and um, I've got a good as he's as it is about 37 years of experience in using computers and so I'm in programming and I've programmed iPads I've programmed Alexa Alexa apps um, not to any de great degrees usually I'll, I'll work on one and then I'll come to the realization that I can't really do as much in it as, as I th think that I could and I'd, it really is it tends to be very involved and I go I don't really want to learn that much so even to some extent I will be I'll limit my own self into the amount of stuff that I have to get into because usually what is more important is um, is that you implement what you need and um, you don't you don't work on adopting technologies that might not be around very long um, because something new will come around the bend and will kind of put it to shame and that's what tends to happen um, to developers to programmers who develop programs is that they 
develop their programs on other people's stuff and the stuff that they're developing it on is not fully developed itself and so you and this is a problem that befalls Linux as well as Windows it's not it's not uh, operating system or company specific it is just the nature of the beast of development is is that as as people we are un, as humans we are unable to to create software in great detail unless we're in numbers in great numbers uh, cooperating or um, or unless we're using stuff that already exists that was created by other individuals the, what they call writing on the backs of giants um, and so that's and but the the difference is is that um, when you're on a commercial platform the assumption is is that is that you will have the choice of either doing open or non-open software on an open platform because of the environment that you're in and the culture the culture that is an open environment people tend to prefer open platforms to closed platforms and that means a closed platform will has the option of pretty much ceasing to exist um, at some time in the in the future um, actually forcing consumers to 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 do unnatural things to retain um, to continue to do th things productive on the computer um, in an open platform you don't see that as much and um, even though it does happen but it's usually because um, there isn't enough developers or interest to continue development on the software but it doesn't mean that people won't stoop so low as to get enough to, to, to back, actually install an older operating system just so they can access that software and um, even in such cases you can run a thing called a hypervisor or a virtual box a, a sandbox on your computer be it Windows or Linux and you can actually put the Linux operating system in there and even Microsoft offers one right now which I think the only value it offers is um, th that would be productive is for people that are comfortable with Windows who want to transition to Linux without leaving their comfort zone but it's otherwise it's really not a good idea to see that as a long-term solution um, however um, so I, there, I, I am just um, there are people out here out, of the, out in the world that do lots of research and I wouldn't say that I'm the most correct I do tend to take hard line a hard line to like everything I talk about because I'm I'm like Ayn Rand uh, how Ayn Rand was with uh, being anti-communism um, and pro-libertarianism and and trying to push capitalism um, it all it takes is to have one really bad experience to make your whole life uh, go in the opposite direction of whatever it is to run away from it and um, for Ayn Rand it was running away from it was running away from uh, socialism and and communism uh, for and I'm not really of the same mindset as her I'm kind of going not towards communism or 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 the evils of socialism I'm going towards the 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 necess, this necessary requirement that there at least be a a community platform and it be completely open um, I don't like commercial environments or commercial standards because there's no guaranteeing what will happen even the way a corporation works um, there is there is political problems that can really prevent a company from even when it thinks that it's going to be around uh, will cease to exist because of errors they made in such as like how they distributed stock among their shareholders if you've got a, a large a, a large controlling stock of a company um, 
and the the person who owns it the head dies the spouse takes over the spouse will then go and liquidate the company or, or push the company into the ground and pretty much anybody who would have any benefit from their technologies would pretty much um, they would lose that value because the company would cease to be their competitor competitor might take it up and and get people to that side but still it is just a bad experience for um, someone who is a consumer that would prefer to buy something and just continue to use it um, without the repercussions that are of the political problems of open source uh, I mean the closed source software open source does have political problems but um, that's because the people that are involved uh, some of them just don't lack the abilities to actually develop software and the people who are developing the software have um, enough knowledge and experience that it makes it difficult for them to interact with individuals who lack it and so if you want to develop something that's got a lot of detail to it in an open platform uh, sometimes if you get clicks of corporations that have um, developers that are really experienced in it and the corporations are in it, have the best interest of creating a fair marketplace um, and an open standard when they're forced to have that um, because the the opposite is is that they may end up with an open platform that doesn't permit that um, th that can happen and it does exist it's I just tend to be against corporations because of the idea of incorporation is got is flawed um, at the begin at the essential thing that you give a corporation all the rights of an individual with none of the responsibilities um, so um, so it, when it when a corporation is responsible when it when it is it's got a business it's got a plan and a and a vision a vision statement that outlines with great detail what they're about um, such that people can know how they're going to behave over time um, what's going to judge their behavior and it is an embracing community um, and they say that openly and they do it then um, that's where uh, their involvement in a platform that of creating a standard is valuable it's when they're not when they it, no matter what they tell you they exhibit the opposite and be and tend to focus on themselves more than their consumers uh, that's when you just don't want those people to be involved in a standards in a talk on standards okay so I'm really when I'm talking to people in this video I'm talking to people that are, are my audience here is going to be people who have some depth of experience in uh, using computers however I am also offering a little veneer um, for the audience that's the lay people that really just if the stuff is flying over your head just let it fly as uh, when I took art my art teachers would say um, just leave yourself open their conservatives will say if you leave yourself open if you open your mind then you'll, your brain will fall out um, and that's the idea is that the fear that um, anything you you um, anything everything you hear has some effect on your ability to 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 assimilate truth and um, and being open-minded means that you have to kind of keep keep track of the ideas and try to test them to make sure that they're that they're um, truthful and it makes it hard it, the more information you take on it makes it hard for you to be completely um, to com be completely aware of exactly you know where the information came from and if it was even true to begin with um, but misinformation is a human attribute um, r rumors are are common because some um, our brains take what we hear and conceptualize it reduce it basically our brains have a method of compressing data 
um, when we get things it compresses everything to concepts and then we take those concepts and we we decompress them back into something that sound that seems like it was a memory but the reality is is that it's a concoction by the brain to try to recreate the original stimuli and that's the reason why we always have rumors regardless of the intent of people it's it's a result of just not having the ability to retain to retain actual information in the brain and some people would seek to perfect that but the problem with perfecting that is that you um, is that you lose the freedom of will the freedom of to, to, to make to make mistakes um, you lose the freedom to be human because um, if if our brains were perfect we'd be robots and robots are and um, and if you were religious Christians specifically the angels were designed by God to basically serve God and ha didn't have the capability of making choices outside of God's will that means anything God didn't want them to do they weren't permitted to do even if they were pondering the idea or or, or um, seduced to the idea that they might someday in the future do it they couldn't and the the identity that we have called Satan was an angel that was made um, super perfect and made um, it was the angel that God worked well to create and make a, a great angel and then the angel saw made the misperception that he was better than God and um, adopted pride made the choice of going against God and then that's what started the whole imperfection according to the Christian belief system so um, I'm not saying Christian belief system in a way that I'm not a Christian I am but um, I have to abstract away from it in order to permit a civil discussion level by which people can talk about morality and and talk about it from various world views uh, or from an abstraction so that they can ponder um, a reason why to maybe read the Bible not out of belief but out of trying to assimilate and and, and ponder truth and um, because the fact of the matter is is that our morality was sourced from that from that book and there's nobody that can really prove that it doesn't have relevance because even the statisticians will point out that to have a source such as the Bible to exist as long as it has and not have been changed um, is it's just statistically impossible um, to prove I mean there's no other there's no other source of information um, over a thousand years that has not stood the test of time like the Bible has so um, that's the reason why people always there's a reason why it will always have relevance is, is that um, it's it has nobody's been able to disprove or, or even take the truths that are in it and say that they're not relevant so that's the reason why I always go back to the Bible because it's a great source of inspiration for which to discuss um, morality and ethics so um, now if you're if you're gay don't I, I'm not of I'm a I'm considered a plus I'm completely in support of the LGBTQ community I believe that um, the your 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 um, your God will uh, Jesus will save you and and you have a direct relationship with God and he will determine whether your behavior is good or bad and it's between you and him it's not between you and me I, it's not something I should be concerned about it's uh, when things are people are like that they have the tendency to become self-righteous which is even worse and is the reason why Jesus said to the Pharisees it'll be better on the day of judgment for the sodomists than it will be for the Pharisees and the Pharisees were if you look at them were these Jews that had um, 
obtained all of the all of the laws and everything that came before and that were holding everybody accountable to those laws but turning around and as hypocrites doing uh, going right against them and that's what self-righteousness is it's a it's a way of manipulating people through the use of of uh, trying to get people to follow a law and the thing about the old testament is is that it's a proving that there's no way a government can absolutely work without um without morality without a source of morality and that um that no amount no amount of laws are going to create a, a real just system because we as humans are imperfect and our imperfection is going to prevent us from actually creating just systems we to do it you really have to be um, everybody has to be on the same page with the same amount of experience and also with the great same intent to try to to create rights and maintain them and um, there are people out there that are like a psychopath who has the has no amygdala I mean has amygdala but doesn't fire is what they say and that means that they can't identify with anybody but themselves and to that ends they will never be able to understand the need for a community or um, when somebody gets hurt they won't be able to respond to oppression um, everything will be from the perspective of why do I need you and um, and if I need you how can I um, how can I manipulate you to my ends um, that is that is the and it's not to say that there's anything wrong with people that are that way everybody is a creation uh, and and unique and uh, psychopaths are fantastic on the front lines of wars because they're unaffected by emotion that if you're going to be in a war and you're on the front line you better have a psychopath around because they're going to be the, probably the the reason you get out of that war in one piece because they will be able to to pinpoint all the enemy and take them out and even if they get shot it's not going to it's not going to really they're not going to be sitting there with the light their life flashing before their eyes and in fear that they're going to die they just won't feel it they'll they'll feel the pain but they will be able to get right through it and um where psychopaths tend to shine is when you have to make life or death choices that involve lots of people and um and they like being you know the best ones like being heroic um however then it turns to be to turning around to being okay worship me because i'm so heroic you know but that's arrogance and that can happen to anybody so anyhow um let's get back to this Myths and phobias about Linux, the result of ignorance and shallow perception experience. Okay, um, number one, uh, Unix Linux doesn't have simplification. No, it reduces everything to being files first and always has. Um, um, maybe that, I haven't really done the research, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. And uh, it's when I was taught it in school, that was what they said. And um, if you get into the science of how the Linux file system works, um, it is it uses things called inodes, which are linked lists of about 11, 11 blocks. The blocks would be pages. Um, if you know about paging of memory, then an inode is like 11 pages, and the first page point is a the first page is a uh, macro block that describes. Um, that kind of describes the file and the permissions uh, and has like the name and stuff um, and there's also inodes that represent um, represent the the um, folder structure uh, folder structure in a directory and it will use multiple inodes that are that have pointers on the end that will point to the next inode group um, and will will produce um, a file or a f or a group of folders or things like that um, or, or I mean a directory um, but keep in mind that the inodes 
um, are are identified numerically and in Linux um, your files are really in a flat file system um, it, it's a flat file system and by that means that th there's no re to Linux the way it sees its files there's no such thing as the concept that the files are organized into folders that is really kind of an abstraction for people not for Linux. It doesn't make sense for a computer to to reduce things into pieces um, unless it is unless it makes some physical sense. Um, it doesn't make any real sense and the reason for that is is because um, anytime you have to move a file from one place to another it takes time so rather than moving the file from one place to another just um, use a pointer and tell the pointer that this file actually um, in in a sense in a conceptually exists someplace else but hasn't moved actually and the only time files actually move in Linux is when you're moving them between devices but um, in as in Windows when you move a folder anywhere in Windows you will notice it actually takes time for it to to happen and this is because Microsoft didn't make that abstraction from the beginning they they they're just really started as um, and this is Microsoft from day one is that they are they take the they take the intuitive approach to making things uh, which is an open is the way open source software tends to get created because you start out being inexper inexperienced and because you're inexperienced you don't you don't think of things in an abstract nature in a way that is easily maintainable and Linux um, is not of the such because it was inspired by Unix and Unix was inspired by some research that Bell Labs did back in the 60s called Multics and uh, the the root the um, the idea or the the summation of the experience of Multics was that it was a an operating system that would man that uh, that took up ninety percent of the computer to manage the other ten percent. That is, it had way too much bureaucracy. And so what they did is they went back to the drawing board and do what's called a post mortem analysis. And uh, mortem is is uh, like in a morgue when something dies you look at it to determine what killed it okay and so most post-mortem analysis to go back and look at what you did and see how you could do it better and so they went through a post-mortem phase and went and got the essentials of Multics and created something called Unix and Unix is really kind of a pun it means it's Multics with the meat removed the balls removed uh, like a eunuch and so Unix is is multics with the balls removed <laughs> and so it's it's with its manhood i mean with it with its identity it's it's um it's um it, it becomes androgynous or something you know it 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 see it becomes um it becomes generic in a way um but generic with a simplification and that is that everything is a file in, in in Unix and Linux is inspired by Unix but there are people who know who are Unix um, aficionados that will say Linux isn't Unix it's Unix inspired but it isn't Unix it isn't a POSIX distribution um, FreeBSD is and FreeBSD was created by the government by um, Berkeley by Berkeley School which is a public school and the government said um, we're using free BSD all or we're using BSD all over the place BSD Unix why are we paying for it and so then they went to to Berkeley and they said okay we're going to force you because you're a public institution and you're part of us we're going to force you to make uh, the 386 version of BSD free and that's the reason why free BSD exists as an open version that anybody can use free of charge is because it it was our government that made it um, it was Berkeley that made it but it was the government 
um, it, the government pretty much owned the whole thing, and so they had the wherewithal to come in and actually force them to make it open. Um, so people who are really concerned about things being POSIX, Unix type stuff is um, are the people that are going to use FreeBSD and everybody else um, who just only care about freeware and not so much how it's been done being done will use Linux or something else that's similar okay uh, Android is a platform that is there to it's there really to permit freedoms to consumers but not to the not to the um, um, not to the not to the um, cost of people who want to sell software still. Um, so it's trying to provide kind of an app store kind of environment of um, iPad with the security of of a of a package manager experience, an enforced package manager experience in the app store um, without the without the the drawbacks of malicious software installations that are rampant with Windows because most people when they install programs on Windows will install them over the internet and even when you think you're uh, getting your software from a trusted source there is always a potential that you might get a middleman attack or you might get it from a mirror that isn't a isn't a trusted mirror and may include malicious code or have malicious code injected to it as you're downloading the file. Um, this is not a problem with Linux because they use package managers to distribute the software as this which is almost the same thing as an app store and um, the package managers will go and do what's called an MD5 checksum check on the package to determine it if it is the original package that is being distributed around so that they can determine whether or not they're getting a middleman attack and so if that ever happens then it will probably say I can't install this because I have reason to believe that some that either the place you're getting this file from is not a trusted source or you are being attacked by somebody uh, uproot of your connection who is um, doing an injection to try to take over your your computer or your organization and um, so Linux people who work on Linux tend to have a vested interest in it being correct and secure and these are corporations even and and, and large organizations governments um, that are trying to avoid um, zero day exploits and 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 um, cybercrime. They're trying to avoid it and how they do that is by using an operating system that everybody uses and though that sounds counterintuitive that an operating system that everybody uses would sound like and that is open that that's written by everybody would sound like somebody could just put something in there and hopefully nobody would notice and then it would create like a security hole. That is possible only when the people that are contributing to the source code are few or when the people contributing to the source code are um, are on a majority from an organization or, or a country, and when that happens, there might be um, there might be splits in the distribution to avoid contact and involvement with um, with any great number of coders from a particular organization because they might have they might have a commercial agenda. Um, and I also present the the idea that um, if you're Microsoft, even if you have the intent of doing of doing good in the community, there it's a commercial entity, and there can be people in their in their wakes that can come in, and you know without anybody. And since it, it would be much easier with Windows because you don't have that many people watching, um, it would be possible for somebody to come in form a coup and then and uh, implement a technology not necessarily include a security hole but um, make the technology in such a way that security is compromised easily compromised and hopefully nobody will ever notice 
um, the the thing they may do this repeatedly and when they succeed in doing it they might turn around and sell it for Bitcoin to a corrupt organization to commit a cyber crime and um, this is probably one reason why in a corporation you should probably have all of your management take uh, the CLR which is the psychopath test um, to see if there's anybody in your organization that may fail to identify with uh, com with anybody of a community because to to have amygdala that doesn't work um, in your brain actually makes it harder for you to 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 form communities to understand the value of a community even of a family to even have children and love them adequately you you will see everybody as a means to your end by default and anything you learn apart from that is going to be pure logic you just don't have the capacity to really understand people who have amygdalas that work um, and that for an for a psychopath um, is what is the what drives a lot of the the frustration that for a psychopath that's been abused as a child leads to the kind of psychopath you hear about that goes around and kills people um, those are the ones that to fear the ones um, nor usually they're they might be manipulative and at best they're good people they just they had they'll understand that they need to value other people but um, there's a whole range there and the default the the one that ha that doesn't see any reason to be like anybody else even though they know they're not uh, they're, they don't have the ability to 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 perceive emotion um, that it, it's a result of the it's in the nature of the beast of what that person is is that they can't it's they're incapable of having emotion and you have to see it from their perspective um, that um, that you can't I mean to have a CLR I mean you have to have people in management that are going to be psychopaths but uh, you want to distance yourself from these people because they are those bosses that will um, take advantage of you and that they, they do it because um, they're they're determining your worth if, uh, according to logic they're not uh, determining your work worth according to trying to make it easier for you and for them and for everybody else it's not to benefit the community it is to get uh, things done and sometimes to get things done means exploiting people enslaving people and and making people work long hours and to the point of just ruining their lives and that can be effective but it is not it's not good it's not ethical so anyhow um yeah i keep i keep going off on tangents i'm sorry about it but it's just the you know i have to talk about those things uh unix linux doesn't have a simple yeah simplification and i said it was all files another thing to keep in mind uh since i also said it was a flat file system um and that the abstraction the folder abstraction is for for pure humans that it, it the folders don't act the files don't actually move around the folders are real the the folder um, convention that um, files are organized in folders think of folders as just extended file names so when you name a file consider that the folder um, where it's stored in the set of folders is just a just a prefix to their file name because that's how it's kind of defined inside of the Linux system it everything and though they call those things namespaces uh, modernly they call them namespaces but that's a namespace is is that is it is a container it, it's a kind of a logical container for the the name of the thing um, or the the project or whatever it is um, it's a means to be able to address it and to distinguish it from things elsewhere in the computer or in the environment so um, and so since there's that abstraction 
and it's extra to the way the system works, um, the system is not limited by the abstraction. So it is, it is really in keeping with that idea that they have in iPad development in object, uh, in um, object patterns of the of the um, uh, what do they call it the the abstraction of the model view controller. Um, Linux has kind of got a model view controller thing going on. Um, the file system is like model view controller um, where you're operating on files but you're not seeing the underlying implementation you're seeing the abstraction when you're working with the files and the computer the file system determines what needs to our links determines what needs to be done with the files dependent upon how the your where you're you're putting them and um, a, another thing that you can do with Linux that will freak out most Windows users is that, um, be and also kind of maybe confuse them is is that um, Linux does not have um, does not have drive labels and it's a good thing because uh, on Windows drive labels are the, the 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 letters that are assigned are determined at at uh, execution and it's it's arbitrary and that means if you store any kind of file that uses the the um, uses the drive letter in the definition of where the files at um, like if you're working on Maya or something you're setting up your your um, your workflow and you're trying to set up where all your files are your textures and stuff and you're using drive letters should you should you remove one drive from your machine it's going to change the drive letter uh, order the order of the letters and stuff or it's going to change which things are assigned to it and it'll screw up your 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 configuration uh, so the solution to that problem is either to label give a label name to the device or to um, put everything in a single drive. Uh, whereas in Linux, um, it doesn't use drive labels. What it does is it makes everything into a tree structure with the top being the root, the root folder and everything being a subfolder to it. And when you bring in any device, it just does what is called a mount. It mounts that device into that, that tree um, as if it was a part of the whole th the whole structure of the tree, and um, and because of this abstraction, it makes it very easy to configure things and maintain that they they are correct. And even when you do you change things, it's very easy to replace the things without the applications actually being made aware that it's going on. And you can even do it so quickly that the applications from for, you know within hours are just not talking to the same drive but they're talking to a clone at, while the the back end guys the IT department is making a clone of the drive they give you a they give you a a, a, a virtual a virtual RAM drive or something that is is a copy of of your of your documents and is then going backing up the stuff and then they may you know I'm not saying that's what happens but it's put you can do it you have the potential to do any sort of manipulative things to the file system without it affecting everybody else who's using that and um, and to keep a, a a static structure even though internally it's doing really dynamic stuff with the with the devices and stuff and it gives you a lot of flexibility and it really prevents a lot of different sort of problems that um, befall anybody who's trying to create a collaborative environment because one of the biggest things and I know this when I was doing computer animation I was collaborating with people is that when everybody has to be work, use, working with the same files they tend to prefer to move things into their own folder structures and then you spend about 70 to 80 percent of the time um, discussing um, where you put stuff 
to try to avoid confusion and eliminate problems. And the, the, um, in the case of Blender 3D, how they solve that problem is to eliminate the dependence on the file system altogether and store everything within inside of a structure within the blend file, which is superb, especially considering the amount of of, redu of, um, of re reuse that is inside of Blender. So I'm going to cut off here because um, I'm going to continue recording, but this video is going to be really long and I can hear people talking in the background and it's getting into our, to the recording. So oh, we'll talk about a little bit more later on and you also need to take a break and get something to drink. I'll be back.